All right, this is Cliff in the doorway too, hanging out with Paul from Wrestle Spirit. Uh, thanks for doing this, man. Really do appreciate it. Uh, why don't you just start off with telling us a little bit about the band, uh, their history, your history, you know, things like that. Uh, okay, so we started, uh, it, it's confusing. I don't even know <laughs> when we started at this point because I've been playing in bands with Mark, our bass player. First of all, mm -hmm. I've known him since we were four years old. And uh, we've been playing in like one form of this band or another since we were 14. And uh, so I, I don't really even know when it started, to be completely honest. But it's, you know, we've always been doing music together. And then uh, I, I guess the most succinct way to explain it would be uh, that back in, see, I don't even know the, the years. I think 2015, um, I was playing in another band at the time. And uh, he wasn't really doing anything, but he just wrote this EP. It was like sort of like doom metal uh, with him just doing like death metal vocals over it. And he wanted me to help him out and play guitar. And I was like, I don't really want, you know, to join another band right now. But then I heard the songs and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. So I recorded it. And uh, yeah, that that was the beginning of it. Uh, different names or whatever. And then we yeah. started we started making uh, some demos because we were like, this is actually, this, this could actually be pretty cool. And uh, we linked up with John, our drummer, who we call Gusmo. So if you hear me saying Gusmo, that's who we're talking about. Perfect. <laughs> um, he joined to play some live shows and we started, you know, like sort of those original demos when we first started, they, they were Mark on vocals doing the death metal shit. And it was like, it was cool. We liked it, but we were like, what do we actually want like out of a band, you know? So uh, we started writing slightly different stuff and we were like, most of our favorite bands have always been, you know, like singers, like, you know, Ozzy and Ted Boy Negan and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, let me give it a shot. So uh, we recorded an EP um, back in 2016 called Harvest. And uh, that was the first time I sang like in my life, like period. Gotcha. I, I dude, like even the songs that we had written, I didn't demo it out or anything. It was like we we got to our friend's studio and I knew what I wanted to do, but I was like, hopefully this works. Like there was <laughs> it was like, let's just go for it. And it it sounded pretty good. So um we we kept doing that. And uh, you know, eventually we went through a couple of different band names and you know uh before finally setting on restless spirit in uh 2019 when we first put out mm -hmm. our first uh album lord of the new depression and uh you know that was that's kind of the story you know cool. just two friends that have known each other forever literally lifelong friends nice. i mean he he lives in my basement i can't get rid of him I'll... <laughs> <laughs> and then uh gusmo who you know he he's an awesome awesome drummer um and i i had known him from from different bands actually he had played in the other band that i was in for a time but not when i was ever in it so we had just known each other and it was just sort of like circumstance that we all got together and decided to do this and so yeah i mean we've been hacking away since 2016 but um nice you know there's so many different band names and you know small lineup changes like gusmo even quit for a little bit uh before coming back so we we had a second guitarist at one point it's just you know just sure. a bunch of stuff until we uh you know settled on what we have now and you know it's been going pretty strong but you know if i actually gave the real detailed history you, you know we'd be here all day it's, <laughs> no, it, it, that's it, cool it's that's way cool. too long you know there are even songs on on lord of the new depression which i wrote when i was 15 Gotcha. Uh, um, and like we had recorded like demos or I guess they were EPs. We called them demos, but they were like seven songs, you know, because we didn't know what the hell we were doing when we right. were 14, 15, 16. And uh, so some of those are like repurposed songs and, and shit like that. So, yeah, that's so now we're here. Awesome. So, yeah, that's what I was going to kind of ask, because I've only listened to the last two records. That's kind of where I started with you is. Uh, I did hear Blood years ago and then realized, oh, my God, this is the same band. I want to go talk to this band now because they've done two records that I really dig. Um, but uh, before that, I heard rumors that you guys kind of had uh, kind of a hardcore background, too. Were you doing a lot of hardcore music? Uh, 
So basically on Long Island, like hardcore is king. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's such a vibrant scene here and it's awesome. Like any, like the thing that I love about the hardcore scene is that anybody could just start a band and, you know, the day they announce, Hey, I got a new band. Everybody's supporting it. They're getting them on shows. Um, they're listening to the demos. It's like an actual fucking community. I, I get it. No, no, no. I, I, I absolutely get it. I, I'm from Jersey. And uh, yeah. So, like I said, I grew up playing CBGBs and ABC No Rio and like all those places. So, I was in hardcore bands back in the 90s. So, I, yeah. I, I, I understand your scene totally. So, you can't escape it. And it's, yeah. you know, we've always been embraced by the hardcore scene. And I think that's because, you know, even back in high school, I was friends like me and Mark. And a couple other kids are really the only like metalheads, and everybody yeah. else was they were into hardcore. But instead of like having an adversarial relationship, we uh, we got along fine. So we would just play hardcore shows. And uh, so when uh, obviously our high school band never took off or yeah. anything, and then uh, you know, so my brother had a band called Detriment, and uh, they needed a guitar player, well, a bass player actually. I started playing bass and then transitioned to guitar. Um, so yeah, I was in a band called Detriment for quite some time with my younger brother. And uh, I mean, we did a lot of cool shit. Like we toured a bunch, we went to Europe, Canada, um, but it was like not really the music that I wanted to be mm-hmm. playing. So I, kind of, I, I quit, um, even though I had a really great time, it was fun um, because I wanted to make, you know, the music that really yeah. spoke to me. and. Uh, but you can't get away from the hardcore in- influence, especially, you know, especially I grew up listening to a lot of even like punk yeah. and, and and hardcore and stuff like that. So it's like, I think that it's apparent in a lot of our sound, like there's definitely a hardcore edge and it, it is. Yeah. I, I, I wear that like a badge of honor. Like nice. I know a lot of dudes in bands, they almost like, I don't want to, you know, sound shitty saying this, but I think it's true. A lot of bands will, you know, they'll start like as a hardcore band and then almost like just disavow it. Like it never happened. You know what I mean? I'm like, why are you doing that? Because it's like your history. Nah, Yeah. There's so much good music of of, of that variety into what you do now. So no, that's cool. I just want to make sure I wasn't crazy because I hear a lot of hardcore elements. And then I kind of read a little bit about your past and it looked like you guys were kind of firmly cemented early on in kind of the hardcore roots. So Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I was, I was always hardcore adjacent. I was never like, you know, I I don't think I've ever moshed a day in my life. You know what I mean? But like the thing that I always loved about Long Island hardcore, especially is the DIY. Yeah. And uh, the support. I mean, like I see it all the time, even on tour. Um, You know, a lot of other scenes don't like, especially in smaller local metal, they do not have the same sense of community. And then they're wondering why. Oh, they're not getting on bigger shows or the band isn't getting traction. It's like, well, you know, you sort of, you shun this whole other world that would probably, you know, a lot of hardcore kids yeah. are more open-minded than they'd like to think. But for whatever reason, um, you know, there's there this like butting of heads, yeah. but we've never had that. I'm always like, yeah, dude, like throw some hardcore bands on the bill because people will come out and like, you know, it's, 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 cool. it's, it's how I started playing death metal. My bu- yeah. my hardcore buddies played me some old emulation. They played me some like old, you know, old school death metal. And I was like, what the hell is this? And they all of a sudden opened the door. And next thing you know, I'm loving that kind of music too. And that came from my hardcore buddies. So no, I totally get it. Yeah, see, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, people, people just, it, I don't know. I don't think they take the time to understand yeah. other people and other scenes and people just, they, they want to be angry and, <laughs> no, or, it, you know, it is what it's it is. All, it's all good. So what I'm going to do is jump into, we'll, we'll start talking about Wrestle Spirit. And I want to bring up a certain band because maybe I'm tone deaf, but I don't goddamn hear it at all. Like the sword reference over and over and over again for the, for your band is almost punishingly annoying to me. Like I see it so much. I I don't hear the sword. So I want to kind of talk about a couple of the bands that I really do hear from you. Maybe just because I'm a 50 plus year old fart. Like I just, the sword ain't my, it's not my generation. Yeah. Uh, But like, my God, man, there is so much Mastodon going on in your band. Like, it makes me smile. Like, early Mastodon, in the mid-period Mastodon, it totally is it. The other one that I hear a lot of is Electric Wizard. Like, I really love 
your guitar tones remind me of that mid period, like Liz playing guitar, electric wizard vibe. And in the other band, I know that people aren't going to say it is, but I, man, at points in times, you sound like Phil from down, like just the way the <laughs> vocals come through, like that groove, that Southern vibe, like it's just there. Like those three bands, I feel like if I had to play three bands to say like, Hey, this is what you're going to hear. That's like, if I played these three bands and they mixed it together, it would be restless fear. That's pretty cool. I mean, you know, it, it's interesting because a lot of people, if you ask someone to describe us, people are usually like, they sound like this band meets this band meets this band. And 99% of the time it's like you ask a group of people yeah. and they're all going to say different bands. But I think that's because we draw like so many influences and like the sword, I don't really hear that. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's, I, I understand it, but I don't really hear it. I mean, my influences are all, all over the place. Yeah. Um, the sword, not so much. I mean, I love the band. I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of one of those people that I just, I get influenced by so many things. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, I'm never actually go, I've never sat down and been like, I want, to sound like this yeah like we just write what we write and uh i think the the, the phil and Selmo comparison i think that it does make sense because uh there's a lot of you know like you could say whatever you want about phil and Selmo about who he is and you know his mm -hmm. bands but um i think that his his vocals especially in down he's trying to emote yep which is you know what i'm trying to do with my vocals um as opposed to just you know some bands let's even use the sword as an example as much as i love them they're sort of sound like you know we need a singer yeah i guess i'll do it you know um but they're singing about like wildly different shit than what i'm singing about yeah. like i'm trying to get like a personal story across and you know they have a lot of like science fiction and um you know this thing about war and stuff yeah. like that. So it, it's awesome. I, I really love the sword. I'm not trying to sound like, I mean, they're literally one of my favorite bands, cool. but I've never like written a riff and I'm like, I want this to sound like the sword. <laughs> so yeah, we, we do get that a lot. I think it's probably just from like the low tune guitars, yeah. and, you know, but I don't know, like my influences and, and truly are like the obsessed, um, huge, uh typo negative huge yeah, you can hear that yeah uh, but a lot of it are like a lot less on the nose like coheed and cambria is nice. probably my favorite band of all time and um john fujante especially his solo stuff um i don't know if you've ever listened to it yes but uh yeah i absolutely love it and i take his approach to guitar playing all the time definitely the most inspiring musician and even you know people like daniel johnston oh god and, yeah and just the way that like, I really loved how his whole thing was, he was just trying to get something across. It, it wasn't like, he's the least technically skilled yeah. like musician, but it doesn't matter, you know? And, and that's sort of our whole thing too. It's like, I don't really care for like, you know, musical acrobatics. Sure. I just do what's comfortable. And I think we all do that in the band. Obviously, you know, I think like Gusmo's one of the best drummers in the world. I truly do, especially best drummer that I know. And so I feel spoiled to, I'll be listening to him play. And when it comes to him, I'm always like, just, just, I want to hear like the best fill in the world <laughs> because I, I like listening to him play drums. Nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, like when it comes to like actually creating songs and stuff, it's never just like, you know, let's throw all these acrobatics around. It's, it's, we just get in a room and we play and that's that. And I think that's why people um, have so many different bands that we sound like um, because it's, no one can really seem to put a finger on it, but we like, I'm not trying to say we're the most unique band in the world. Yeah, yeah. That, I don't think that's true, but our influences are so, so like all over the place that you know, it definitely bleeds through. I mean, you're even saying, you know, like hearing some hardcore and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, how does a sword and hardcore fit into the same sentence? It, but it, I don't it know. doesn't. No, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that, that's cool. Uh, so that's the next thing I was going to kind of talk about was like the groove and the rhythm of the band. 
I think is what drives me to you the most. Like you have one of the best heavy grooves that I've heard in a band in a long time. Like sometimes it feels like bands fake it. You can just tell that you guys are having the best time, like kind of just throwing down these heavy monster riffs. And what I was going to say was you, you made me so happy because the other term that I hear a lot for you is stoner. And I don't see as, yeah. you as a stoner band. Okay. You said the obsessed, which is the greatest thing. Cause I was going to say what you remind me most of and tell me if I'm wrong, cause it's your band, but I like, it's my thoughts coming through. You're kind of like a retro kind of doom band with sludgy overtones and just the love of blues. Like I just hear yes. the blues screaming through you. Yeah, so. you hit that, you hit the nail on the head and nobody seems to pick up on that, which is fine. But uh, I mean, Almond Brothers, I've seen them yeah. more times than I can count. And, you know, early, early blues music is really influential in my playing. Like I, I never really feel like a metal guitar player. Yeah. Cause I, you know, I, I when I'm playing, you know, everything I learned was from the most basic form of like, you know, what came before rock and blues. I mean, even like Elvis is, yeah. you know, first tattoo I ever got in my entire life was just the word Elvis on my leg. I mean, that's nice. how much I, I, I love the man's music, but a lot of that, you know, is from early blues music or yeah. early, early Led Zeppelin. They were just ripping off right. blues songs and, you know, e or even, uh, people never seem to talk about this anymore, but uh, or Black Sabbath, you know, they were just a heavy blues band when Absolutely. they invented a heavy metal. So yeah, blues is a huge thing, huge, huge thing uh, for the band. And um, yeah, I mean, it, especially in, in terms of like groove and getting that like, you know, just like the rhythms. What I was always attracted to in bands was the bass and like the low end rumble, you know, like, John Paul Jones, uh, Geezer Butler, obviously Peter Steele. Yeah. And um, I, I'm really, I think that to be a truly heavy band, what you need is that like grit or just density from the low end. And that will translate to like a heavy, you know, nice groove. And we also don't play very slowly no. you know, for a doom band. Like, um so yeah like even i remember like being a kid and i was a guitar player but i would always listen for the bass lines and that was always my favorite part and i started playing guitar but i always honestly really just wanted to be a bassist nice. um but i i i learned guitar and that's where i was and i was writing songs and it made more sense for me to play guitar nice. um but yeah i mean bass and and grooves and just especially it, that's the great thing about gusmo too because you know we just like lock in so fucking heavy it's like we were at practice yesterday and i was cracking up because we were playing one of our songs cascade emulators that we played so many times it's like i don't even know why we practice it anymore you know the amount of times we played it but um we were just messing around like just ruining the song on purpose <laughs> And um, we just like went off into a tangent. We were like both laughing so hard and just playing nonsense. But we were so locked in to playing nonsense. We were playing like hilarious stuff, but it was like flowing together perfectly, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely think that's where the groove comes from. And, you know, he's a huge, huge fan of Jimmy Chamberlain, Smashing Pumpkins. Sure. Um, so, I mean, you know, that guy's just, you know, groove for days. So, yes. Cool. Yeah. So the next thing I want to kind of jump into is the vocals. And I don't know, if, again, maybe I'm hearing things, but so far I feel like I'm kind of on the same wavelength as you. So this is good. Like we're having a good conversation, but I love the aggressive vocals that are kind of buried in with those harmony vocals. Like I, I don't think people hear it as much as I do, but like, I, yeah, it's not death metal, but there's some kind of guttural moments there, man. That I think are just buried in the background that are just beautiful, like they almost blend into the guitars with those beautiful harmonies that you have too. So am I hearing things or do you have those kind of vocals on there too? I, I don't have any gutturals, but um, I, there definitely is a lot of aggression behind my voice. Like, I, like, look, I'll say this right now and I say this all the time. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I, <laughs> I, I, 
I don't know how to sing. I, I don't know what I'm doing in that regard. I'm just trying to get like a feeling across. And I think that like, there's definitely, I don't want to say harshness to my voice, but it's like an untrained, uh, you know, way of singing. And um, I don't know, I always really double everything up and I really try and just like push for power. So I, I don't know what you're hearing. That's interesting. I've never gotten that before, but um I could, I think I could see what you're saying because everything seems to just gel really well. Yeah. So it's like almost like if it's not there, which clearly it's not, something is taking its place and it's right. working to, you know what I mean? So whatever happened seems to be working well, but no, I mean, like I, I have sort of like a, a yelling way of like okay. singing and also, so maybe that's probably what you're hearing. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, so what I'm going to do is talk about a couple songs off the new record and the record before that, are particular songs that I love and kind of drew me to the band even more. And I kind of want to know a little bit about these. So there's two songs off the new record, After Image, that I really want to talk about. And then there's one song you already goddamn ruined it because it's the one you messed with the entire time the other day. <laughs> but it's all right. We'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, but yeah, so the first one I want to talk about is Shadow Pain. Uh, okay. And the reason why I want to say that is if there was a song that I would play for somebody to say, this is what Restless Spirit sounds like. It would be Shadow Command. Because I feel like there's a little bit of everything you do in that song. Yeah, I, I, I would definitely agree. Um, that song, um, so it was, was kind of, I think it was one of the earlier songs that we wrote for this record. I, I can't really remember because we write so quickly. I mean, like the album, we wrote it in three months and and blood we wrote in one month so it was mm. like it felt like this album was taking so long <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it, it, it's sort of like also one of those things where i i agree with what you're saying but we also didn't intentionally set out to do that gotcha. like i think because we never really set out to do anything and we just play what comes naturally um a lot of times we end up with a bunch of ideas and we find a way to like put it all together in a cohesive way because you know it starts off kind of jammy and then yep. you know it's that song definitely has to me like a like a almost like a down riff mm -hmm. and yep. and then we got the uh the harsh vocals from mike hill uh from tombs which you know great friend of mine yeah. i love tombs so i was super happy to have him on it and then yeah we got that whole melodic section and there's mm -hmm. even like some some uh keyboards buried deep within the mix and uh, at the end, it's just kind of like a very just like ass beater riff. Yeah. So, but that that song really, it wasn't really so much like, oh, let's just show everybody everything we have to offer. It's more of one of those things where it's like, you know, it's like an unspoken rule of the band that we're just going to do whatever mm -hmm. the fuck we want and whatever comes natural. Like we never force anything and uh that song like i will say that the one thing i did set out to do with this album was to um condense the songs um sure. basically because everybody was was started calling us like like prog and yeah. stuff <laughs> and like i didn't agree and i thought it was cool but it was like so many people were calling us that that it made me just like all right if that's what everyone thinks that album is then i know I, I I don't want to do that again. Sure. We did it once. Like, why would I do that a second time? Um, and a lot of the shows we play, especially, you know, I was talking about hardcore and playing with hardcore bands or even like, let's just say festivals with uh, like shorter sets. Judgment in Exile off of Blood is a, a nine minute song. Yeah. And that's one of the most popular songs off that album. I mean, most of the song on, on Blood there are really only five actual tracks besides the, the interludes and mm -hmm. intros. So we were sort of like, all right, the one thing we want to do is try and just, not that I ever thought there was any fat on blood, because I still think that even though the songs were longer, um, they were a little meandering and we mm -hmm. wanted that. I wanted to just get li a little more focused. So if we're stuck with a 25 minute set, we could play more than three or four songs, yeah. <laughs> you know? Cool. Cool. Uh, so the other song I'm going to talk about uh, is the one that I feel like when we were just talking a moment ago about the heavy groove and the downbeat that you have, like, I feel it the most in the song, and that's the fatalist. Um, yeah. And the reason why the fatalist speaks to me is I feel like it's the physical heaviest on this record that you become 
even though it's not a heavy song. Like, I don't know if that makes sense or not. Like, no, it, it does, because I agree with you. I do, 100%. It's sort of just a big, that's probably the doomiest, like, you know, close, like, actual doom yeah. thing we've ever done, like, as Restless Spirit, you know, it's just, you know, that heavy, repetitious riff over and over and, you know, it's it stays slow or at least yeah. as slow as we can play because we're all kind of just we don't I, I i don't know we're too hyperactive to be a slow band but gotcha. we we try and be kind of slow and uh so yeah i mean that song um that actually started with a bass riff and i was just doing chords on it and i i almost wrote it as it was like it was a really distorted bass with some chorus on it and i was like maybe this is just going to be like an interlude track or something like that. And maybe it's going to be ambient, but you know, I just brought it into the practice room and it just became something a hundred percent different. And uh, yeah, I mean, people, I'm happy because a lot of people really like that song and I was um, not concerned because I mean, we have eight songs that I think are worth listening to on the album. Um, but I had thought that maybe that would be one of the least popular songs and it is absolutely not. And I'm also very thankful for that because we got Wino to play on that track. Yeah. So he, he does the first half of the guitar solo and then we trade off and I do the second half. Um, so I was like, shit, I hope this song doesn't get overlooked because it, especially emotionally that song, you know, like I really put like the, the whole, the whole album is very emotional. Like, and I've been very open about that, but that song is probably the most like um, concentrated, mm -hmm. um, especially the chorus. And, you know, that's, that's the one song, like usually I could like take my mind off of, you know, what this song's about or, or whatever when we're playing live and just like sort of focus. But that's the one song that like still gets me. And I'm like, I, I feel it, gotcha. you know what I'm saying? So I think that's what a lot of people are, are hearing. And I'm very thankful for that because, um, you know, I was actually saying this in another uh, podcast the other day, but uh, the whole, you know, for me, the whole point of music is to like uh, join an experience with a bunch of people and, uh, you know, to create an expression or an emotion. And uh, a lot of people seem to be really latching on to, you know, the emotions that I was trying to get across, which is fucking great because a lot of times, you know, everybody writes with their emotions and stuff, but it's not always picked up on. And I, I'm really happy and grateful that uh, this time around, uh, that definitely seemed to have gotten through. Like people are like, okay, yeah, I, I can see where this dude is coming from, yeah. as opposed to just like, yeah, dude, those fucking guitar riffs are awesome. What, what are those songs are about? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is, which is totally fine. I mean, it's heavy metal, you know? Like, so that's, that's totally cool. But I really, really wanted to just like, no, like I have something I want to get across and I'm going to spend all this time, you know, writing music to reflect that. So hopefully people pick up on that. And if they don't, it's no big deal. But they have been. So I'm, I'm really, really thankful for that. Cool. So, yeah, I'm going to jump back to the last record, the blood record. Uh, sure. And the reason why I'm doing it in reverse is I feel like. Progressionary wise, like that's the uglier, sludgier stepsister to the new record. Like, it's just a lot more, it's not angry, but it's like aggressive. It's a lot more aggressive in my feelings, just tonality, uh, production wise, all that. So again, my favorite song on that is Cascade in Motion, or like the one you were just yeah. talking about, all right? And the reason why I love this song so much is, now this may make no sense again, this is kind of the narrative of my life. I hear things that other people don't hear and I'm glad that you at least can appreciate it when I give it to you. Uh, but if Crowbar was like a retro doom band, that's what that song reminds me of. Like, And the reason why I say that is your vocals remind me of Oddfellow Rest Period Crowbar so much on that song. Like it, it makes me listen to Crowbar after I listen to that song <laughs> every awesome. time. Okay, but I'm just being honest, all right? So kind of talk about that song and like, why do you think, 
and and I know I'm not the only one that loves it because I know a lot of people love this song. But yeah. why do you think this song is like drawn so many people to the band? Because it fucking rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that song fucking rocks. There's no two ways about it. Uh, that that's a song. Like if we're ever playing a show and we haven't gotten people into it in, in the very beginning, I yeah. know every single every single show we've ever fucking played. You look into the audience and everyone starts going like this, you know, because <laughs> it it rocks. Yeah. And um, but yeah, you know, I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head, like completely, especially in, in terms of like, you know, uh, my attitude and the things I was trying to get across. Like I was fucking pissed off when I wrote that album. Yeah. Like I was an angry dude, especially on that song. You know, like you read the lyrics and yeah. like uh, one of my favorite lines I ever wrote was uh, I found out you were a snake once you bit me. And it's just, you know, sort of about like you trust people in this world and you think they're good people. And then you find out that they're just pieces of shit and the anger that comes comes along with that. So it's definitely a pissed off song for sure. But uh, I think we did it in a way that wasn't just like a brutal breakdown or anything. Right. Like we're just like going to create like a, a rocking, angry song. Uh, but yeah, like. It's that it's that drum beat, man. It's definitely that driving <laughs> drum beat for sure. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I I don't disagree. So I want to talk about the label that you're on because mm -hmm. I love a lot of stuff that's on Magnetic Eye, but yet it's all really diverse. I wouldn't say yeah, two bands are the same on this label. And mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing, but you are adjacent adjacent to a lot of the bands yes. that are on this label if yeah. you know what i mean uh not that that's bad because uh -huh. i feel like the stuff that they sign they purposely look for things that are different and unusual but yeah. how did how did you hook up with them and were you shocked that they were even interested in working with you at the point in time that they started talking to you um no we weren't we weren't shocked we were happy because i really like that label yeah um I, I, maybe I was a little like, are you sure? Because, well, not really, because look, okay, it, it's like when we we're talking about, like you ask people about what we sound like and everybody's got a different, yeah. you know, opinion, but then we also go and we'll play like Stoner Fest and, you know, we're like, we're just, we're a metal band, you yeah. know, and we, we're a fucking heavy band and we like, we'll have like blast beats or like D beat parts or, you know, mm -hmm. the hardcore shit. And, um, so it's sort of just like the way that magnetic eye went down was that we self-released blood mm -hmm. and we we treated it like it was legitimate we did start a label um but it only lasted for like two releases because it got so expensive <laughs> but we pressed our own vinyl uh you know we did we did everything the right way we weren't just like let's just throw it to the wind and see what happens we were like we're gonna do this on our own but we're going to do it correctly and then we ended up selling out of of all of our vinyl i actually had to take 20 down from Bandcamp so we would have stuff for an upcoming tour <laughs> um but before the album ever even came out um so that's why i wasn't really surprised that after it started getting some traction we started getting interest from labels and stuff like that because it's like you know, you have to look at it from a label's perspective. It's like they want to make sure they're making like a sound investment. As much mm -hmm. as you love the music, it's like, you know, there are a lot of really, really great bands that I'm sure a lot of labels would love to sign. But if, you know, if no one's listening to them and they're not really making any sort of progress, there's only so much you can do, which is the unfortunate reality, um, which sucks, but it's true. And um, when we started talking to Magnetic Eye, like the thing that, I, I really loved about them and you know Jad in particular who runs it is you know he just he seems to just sign what he likes right and and he has a really good ear for putting together like a very diverse roster and uh I think it's really starting to pick up like um they're starting it's seeming like they're getting a lot more well known uh yeah. magnetic eye which is great I mean like I love pretty much every band on the roster and, and I want to see it grow. And it, it's like, it still feels like we're doing the DIY thing, yeah. even though we're, we're not. Um, 
but the label is, you know, it's kind of a boutique thing. You know, they don't, they're not like uh, Warner Brothers or anything. No, 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 like, no, yeah. yeah. Which is good because we, we want to be with a label that really gives a shit. Um, oftentimes bands will sign to labels that are just huge and there'll be a small little band. And then it's like the labels, eh, whatever. We threw money at it and it didn't work out. So whatever. But yeah. Chad and Magnetic Eye, like they really, really give a shit. And to me, that's the most important thing because it was sort of like, well, why do you want to be on a label? And at that point, the honest question, the sorry, the honest answer was like, <laughs> we're fine. Like <laughs> we're doing fine on our own. But I sort of, I wanted the expertise of, of someone that actually knew what the hell they were doing. You know what I mean? So it was like, we, we could have kept doing it on our own, but I, I wanted, I wanted someone to sort of hold my hand a little bit instead sure. of me just figuring everything out. Cause it's like, you know, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. That's mm -hmm. how I've always been. That's how this band operates. If we want to do something, <laughs> we're going to do it. Um, but sometimes it's, it's a little stressful when I, you know, we have that, let's just fucking go get it attitude. But yeah. we don't, you know, we don't, we don't know shit. <laughs> I'm always open to listening to people and, and learning. And there's a lot that we've learned from this label. And I, nice. I cannot say enough good things about Magnetic Eye. Like that's truly. Awesome. Yes. No, that's cool. Uh, yeah. I, I, I was just going to throw on it. Uh, so I'm signed to a label in the UK called Aesthetic Death. And they've put out like, the esoteric records they've put out like you know noise stuff but uh i was in a band called as all die for years and uh we put out records on like 16 different labels we, we always just had another friend that like you know okay you want to do a record with us cool yeah oh uh, yeah awesome but Stu, the owner of the label for years was talking to me about doing an as all die record and we just never like kept caught up and i just happened to send him uh like a tape of my new stuff and he literally messaged me back and explained the band to me like I would have explained it to him. And like at that moment in time, I was like, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I totally get the magnetic eye vibe because like Stu and I now are three records into doing this, the slumbering project. And he gets it. Like I, I'll tell him like I'm looking for something art wise and he'll say, no, 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 no. It needs to be more this. And he's right. Like it's freaky. Like, he just knows it as well as I do. So I appreciate that you're the same way with that label. And we need more indie labels like that, that actually totally. give, that give a shit, like that literally care about the band as much as the band cares about the label. So. Well, yeah, because then there are also a bunch of smaller labels that don't really take off. And it's sort of because like it, I, I always question, you know, I'm sure they're passionate about it, but it's like. I don't know. So sometimes I see like, or like, let's talk about like scam labels, I guess. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And you know what I'm talking about. Just yeah. like bands, uh, labels that will just like press shit and like not do any of the work and just expect bands to like pay all the, it's like, what the fuck are you getting out of this? You know, yeah. you're defeating the whole purpose of music. And like, I, I hate that big, it's like the big corporate attitude in like the smallest regional right. audience. And it makes no sense to me. You know what I mean? Yeah pisses me off <laughs> cool. no no and, and that's cool uh so i'm gonna twist this into a different side now too uh so i what does doom mean to you so the reason why i asked that is doom isn't doom anymore like yeah in 1970s 80s and early 90s there was two kinds of doom there was the retro clean singing doom and there was doom death like there was just two now anything with a heavier sludgier sound seems to be doomed to me yeah like and i don't always call it doom and i think it frustrates people but to you like would you call yourselves a true doom band not or, even close see and i wouldn't either and, that, and i respect that but like to you what is doom like if you could tell me two bands and everybody would agree what's doom? well okay so i think that first of all doom like what genre is shifts as time goes on right so what doom started as is not what what doom is and if people want to call us doom i i'm not going to debate it because that's where we just seem to fit in the world mm -hmm. that if that's the easiest thing i'm fine with that so i'll use like the doom metal hashtags or i'll yeah. say we're a doom metal because it's like i don't know what to say at this point but if 
the current state of doom i would say um probably like obviously first of all every band takes electric wizard influence. yes so electric wizard wizard is the you know the poster child especially they got that really slow yeah fuzzy and then um on the other side i mean it's not even that far from electric wizard but um you know sleep the more meditative okay. yeah uh you know but that could then you could also call that stoner rock yeah, or I it's know. just you know i i don't know i don't know what doom is because when i was growing up i thought doom was basically you know just saint vitus and bands that would just play slow or you know the really slow parts of early typo negative um or candle mass um you know but there aren't really a lot of bands that sound like that anymore right. electric wizard yeah but like the classic like doom like when i think of like doom i don't think there's any band that encapsulated more than uh saint vitus i right, mean right, it, right. it's slow as hell it's heavy it's they have that i don't give a fuck attitude and it's it's dark music um so that's that's what I would say Doom is, and there are not many bands like, or or maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm just not finding them, which which is totally like valid and possible. But um, I think there's but, just subgenres of subgenres of subgenres now, and that's what it is. Like, but you're right, I I agree with you. Like the whole rise above Lee Dorian days of like, yeah. you know, he would he, he would tour with bands with Cathedral and sign them. Basically, that's what you know. That's Doom yeah. to me too. I agree. So. Yeah, I, I, I mean, so we fit solidly within the Doom genre, but it's like we're faster than pretty much yeah. every band we play with. And I, I don't know. I don't dislike the label. Like, I'm fine if people, like, if that's how they want to classify us. But, like, I don't know. And we never even get that slow. And, like, what is yeah. Doom these days, you know? But it's like, I, if, that, if that's the easiest genre, because I understand that genres are important for people. Yeah like it, it's true you could say that they're not all you want but I, I mean you gotta have a way it's like you know when people are like what kind of movies do you like right. I like horror movies. you know what i'm saying it, it's important so yeah sure you people can call us a doom band and call us a sludge band and call we just I, in my opinion we're just a metal band yeah um because i i don't know it's like you know metallica was a thrash band and then yeah. they almost were like a southern rock band and then right you know they're just a metal band because they kind of just do whatever they want right um so we kind of take that you know thought process of we just play what we want so it or coming to the shows you tell us what we are because we're just not concerned about it <laughs> gotcha. you know what i mean so it's like fine we're doomed cool cool no absolutely cool uh so the last question I'm going to ask you before I kind of wrap it up is if there was one band that you could ask and say, or have take one of your songs and make it their own, who would it be and why? Oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. Like one, like just any band in the world. Right. It doesn't matter if they are living dead. What if, if you could say, any band could take one of your songs, rework it, and make it their own. Who would it be and why? Well, first of all, it would definitely have to be a band that sounds completely different. Okay. Because I'd want to see what they could do. I would like to see... Hmm. That's a, really, that a really good question. I would want to see a band well outside of the metal genre take marrow and do what they want with it okay because I, I i think that that song works pretty well just if you strip that song down uh to just acoustic guitar and vocals the song works and i know that because when we were in the studio we were working on some parts nice. and uh the the engineer john uh he was like what was that part and he started singing it and playing it on acoustic guitar while because he wanted me to play a lead over it and i was mm -hmm. like oh wow this this sounds like a good song acoustically so um i don't know like what's it and maybe it'd be funny for uh speaking of like acoustic acts to do it maybe uh the Abbott brothers do <laughs> 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 <It's funny. laughs> 
let's see what they would do with it like nice. a, con- a country uh, uh, acoustic but yeah it would definitely have to be a band at like well outside of our genre Very um nice. that, that's just fun you know it's cool absolutely so the last thing i'm going to have you kind of do is tell us what's going on with the band for the next three to six months touring shows new music anything else other things you're doing just kind of tell everybody that's watching this uh or going to be watching this what you guys are up to so i don't know when this episode is going to go up but we're playing in we're flying out to detroit for acid Witch's annual halloween show on the 28th of this month and then we got to get home the next day to long island to play our record release on october 29th nice um after that we're doing i think about like two weeks with howling giant uh sort of around the Midwest and then down to uh, Texas. And then it ends in South Carolina. And then uh, we have we have some more tour plans in December and January, but they're not solidified. So I don't want to talk about it yet. Um, and besides that, uh, I mean, we write records very quickly <laughs> and, you know, we don't want to stop that. Uh, I mean, the day that After Image came out, I was like, all right, mission accomplished what are we going to do next so uh we're answering that question for ourselves uh and the way we're answering that is by we're writing new songs and just like i'm going to come up with some ideas and present it to the band and see where that goes but yeah just we're going to tour on this album for a bit and uh it's been getting a really good reception and uh people are are listening and they like it uh which is important for any band <laughs> So we're gonna we're just gonna keep doing our thing and play as much as possible, and uh, when we have time, which we will find it because I'm a workaholic, we will write a new album. And nice. whenever we're allowed to release it, we'll release it. Nice. All right. Well, again, Clint from the doorway too, hanging out with Paul from Restless Spirit. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm glad we got to do this. So, uh, like I said, uh, I almost feel like a kindred spirit. We like a lot of the same things. I can tell, which is really cool. When you are in Texas. Uh, I'm outside of Dallas. I'm in the Fort Worth area. I will absolutely come see you. So there's not even a question about it. Oh, nice. I think uh, it's a good plug for I, we're playing Dallas uh, November. Yeah, I saw. I saw. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dada, I think that's yep. in like Deep Ellum, something yep. like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit north of Dallas, but yeah, it's 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 a cool area. So cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. For anyone yeah. else that's in Texas, come out to the show. But yeah, it was really great talking to you. I, you know, so one of the really great things also, just to go off on a tangent real quick, is that, uh, you know, doing a press or interviews or podcasts with this new album, like it seems like whatever happened with the band, we're attracting people that like just get it and are excited yeah. to talk. So it's like, it was another really great conversation. I appreciate you having me on, Clint. So thank hey, you. Man. Absolutely, man. You have a great night and thank you so very much. All right. See you.